I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get the remote it locked. I got okay, I gotta remember where I put the remote. <laughs> it fell off on all our journeys and I've never used the remote yeah. before and so uh, comes with the tripod. Oh. So I love you. That's good. <laughs> so there's grace for him. Oh, there is. There is. There's there's plenty, there's plenty for me. For me and you. Me. So and would it be proper for us to say the same thing to you? <laughs> Both of you? We do. I do. Uh, yeah, I should say that. So I shouldn't list the multitude of sins on a blackboard behind No, you me. can do that because that's interesting. <laughs> Is it? Okay. <laughs> Oh, boy. oh, I have a multitude of sins. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Funny how it comes Aww. up on Facebook or what it, yeah, that you're sitting on that side. Of it. <laughs> yeah, it does mirror it. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I just love giving him a hard time. I guess you have to look in the you mirror. You keep doing that. that. I suppose <laughs> I can bring in the camera and we do, the, do it on that. Oh, yay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. New toys I have. So. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, as hard as it's been to figure out all this technology and stuff, there's part of him that's just really loved all of this. <laughs> Despite the stress. We have been friends. so lucky. We have been so Except lucky. for the software. Yeah. Mm. The software almost killed me. Yeah. Because yeah. I could not get it to work. Yeah. You, you would... It's a lot of frustration. Yeah. You know? I kept waiting for him to... Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> the steam was rising out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, it's... That's been the interesting part for every pastor, is, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out how we do all this. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I think not just pastors, any Anybody. job. Anybody, yeah, any job. I, okay, I haven't checked on farming yet because there's quite a bit you do on your own, but I don't know I'm how impactful do it's too. been. You know, you know, they're still doing their thing. And, but just about every other business is yeah. going mm -hmm. to Zoom meetings or work yeah. from home and. Jim was saying that at work they're starting to budget in money for travel. Yeah. Well. So that there will be, you know, these trips that they have always made that they have done the Zoom conferencing. He gets yeah. up at the crack of dawn to talk to somebody in Europe and now they'll be. So realizing on the flip side is we have our fall theological coming up in two weeks. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to cost us $30 because we're doing it on Zoom. And that's well, nice. But versus yeah. going up there, getting a room, paying yeah. for a yeah. Paying for the but missing the interaction. But that's the yeah. thing. We don't get to talk with people yeah. and yeah. really meet the new people and the interaction. That's, that's a very big deal. Yeah. I know. There's no more hazing of the new pastors. Oh, honey, you can't use that. In case that you're wondering word. why it's so that hard to find pastors. That, that, was, that was more North Dakota. Yeah, North Dakota is really. We, we got lucky. The year we were in North yes. Dakota, our, uh, the person in charge just didn't delegate enough, and so we forgot to do the hazing. So that was nice. And so the year after, that that makes you wonder, doesn't it? Well, it's just it like does. you know, you had to wear a special hat all day oh, long, and yeah. you had to be you part to, of a special skit. skit. Yeah. And oh, really? Fortunately, we yeah, missed out on that. You know, you know all those get to know you games they do in college yes, and other oh, places. Teachers yeah. do them too. Yeah, and it's and called say, building bridges. And, and you want to say, you know, I'm I'm not 18. Barf, oh. barf, barf. Yeah. Oh, we oh, well. oh, just awful. You yeah. sit and you bounce a ball back and forth. Yep. Are we on? You, gotta, oh, yep. you have to start remembering to turn, turn your the volume off. Volume down. Oh well. Oh well. Um. So okay. I think I have the yeah. sermon this week. Don't okay. I don't remember. Well, I was at our Savior's last okay. Sunday. Yep. So go ahead. So. Play you nice. know, from week to week, we're like, okay, where are we at? Play nice. Are? Play nice. We know who we are. Still going to have to have a sermon ready. Yeah, no matter what. We got it. But anyway, so, getting a little more serious, probably not. <laughs> if the wrong more. one showed up the wrong place, would anybody notice? No. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start with our prayer? Okay. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast. And teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 So, we are in um, the Gospel of Mark in the 10th chapter. Jesus announced and enacted in history the new reality of God's surprising activity. These two stories demonstrate this new reality. Women and children are accepted and valued, not dismissed as inferior to adult men. 
And that was very revolutionary. And in some places it still is. Mm -hmm. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus, they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Here ends the gospel. Now, if we could have kids at worship, we could be having They're them. coming back. We had, we had choir on Sunday. I know. I saw that on, uh, on online. I'm like, oh. So just a reminder, the last Sunday of the month, we will have choir. Okay. Will I ever get to be there on the last Sunday? I don't know. I haven't looked that far. Okay. Well, once more, Jesus is tested. This time, the test focuses on the age-old question of divorce. The Pharisees were well aware of the differing type teachings concerning divorce. At least since the time of Moses, acceptable reasons for divorce had sparked heavy debate. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? At this point, the discussion does not suggest the possibility of a woman divorcing her husband. Keep in mind, Mark is written during the first century culture. Some viewed women as property to be easily discarded. So what, still do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would Jesus need to say to pass the test by the Pharisees? I don't know if there was an answer that they wouldn't jump all over. No, no. This is... Either answer he gave, he would have been condemned. Cause, yeah. yeah. Well, if you remember what John was beheaded for. Yeah. For saying you shouldn't get divorced and remarry. Marry your yeah. sister-in-law. Yeah, that too. Yeah. And then um, if he says, yeah, everybody can get divorced, then they're going to come on and say, well, he doesn't care about Moses and his teachings. Yeah. And so, again, it's not one of those where there's no really good. There's no winnable answer. He yes. was going against the culture at the time. Yes. Well, and every time you do that, you're going to run up against a big wall. Yeah. And for some cultures, when a woman, you know, loses her husband, she becomes the property of the brother i mean yeah. there's the culture <laughs> yeah well and and you know to keep in mind um the women in this situation they didn't get to choose who they married they had no choice of anything mm -hmm. and they were property mm -hmm. and then if a man decided he didn't even have to have a good reason he would just yeah. say i divorce you yeah. and then she you know she was had to hope that her brother would take her back there's no yeah there was no protection for her whatsoever yeah. Yeah. Right. None. Yeah. And um, and I think some people really jump all over the divorce aspect of this, you know, making it say stuff about stuff that isn't really pointed at. But this, this is about um, protecting, mm -hmm. protecting the one, you know, Jesus is always about that, protecting the outcast, protecting the one who has no power, you know, the vulnerable. Um, that's what this is about. Yeah. And... Um, so I think it's kind of ironic, too. He goes from the divorce to children. Yes, another mm -hmm. vulnerable. But oh. Very much so. Absolutely. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. And uh, and I, I think that's the point, too, the vulnerability of the, mm -hmm. the two people, the woman who had no say and a child who was, well, we consider him unblemished or, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and, and they're both illustrations of the church. I mean, mm -hmm. quite often we see, you know, the relationship between God and the church as the bride and the groom. Mm -hmm. And then we are all children of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's that, and so it's multi-layered where you can, it is very, very where much you can so. go with these. 
And I guess that's why I get frustrated when, you know, people, of course, like to use scripture to hammer whatever it is they want to hammer. Mm -hmm. And it's very upsetting when something like this that is meant to be for protection of the vulnerable is used as a tool against the vulnerable. That makes me very angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as the next question, it, this has been going around for centuries. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And, yeah. and people have used the scripture to do whatever. Well, my favorite is they, the Garden of Eden. I love that. It's our fault, you know. Oh, yes. Everything's mm -hmm. our fault. Yep. We women. We Because well, you here. know guys can't hear. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't hear a thing selective. that was said. Selective it is. But don't kid yourself. But yeah, it, in the scripture, it clearly says Adam was sitting right there. Yeah. He knew full well what was going on. But the woman, but the woman, but the woman. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, that's the hard part is over the centuries, you know, there is a time the rabbis, I think this was around the time of Christ, if the wife burnt a piece of toast, yes, you would just say, "I divorced you." I divorced you. I divorced you. That would be it. And, and it's like you just have to say that three times, and then you lost your home, you lost everything. That's also from a Fiddler. My yeah. gosh. Yeah. And and it's and but it's a matter of yeah. the argument comes from both a matter of power and a matter of protection. Is absolutely we want to make sure that women and children could, aren't thrown out where they have no means of support, mm -hmm. where they have no place to live. Yeah. I mean, and it's also part of our culture is you make a promise. You want to you keep the promise. You, you made it keep up. It. I'm not saying it, it, if you don't keep it in abuse, but it, it burning the toast is. Yeah. I mean, that's I think that's the hard thing for one of the things we talk about in premarital is you are going to argue. Yeah. And and that's one of the faults. Yeah, I blame older generations for is. Well, you, before it was thought, you don't argue in front of the kids. Oh, yeah. And so when you when the kids grow up, they say, well, mom and dad never argued. Why are we arguing? <laughs> and then it's like, what we're doing wrong, this isn't working. And in fact, every, okay, I have met not one couple who hasn't had some sort of argument. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a toast argument or <laughs> you bought a car without my permit, without talking to me first argument. Big but. One. You know, or disciplining kids. Or disciplining kids. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, every, and so some couples don't realize that that's, yeah. when you have two people together, they're going to argue about something. Yep. It's, what do you do with the relationship when you argue? Mm -hmm. Is the more important part. Mm -hmm. Do you want to make it better? Do you not? And I'm not saying physical abuse is not arguing. No. Yeah. That's just wrong. Yeah. 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 Well, and emotional and mental abuse as well. That too. But, it's true, um, man. This is never bad. Yeah. Yeah. But you do know people who, for them, there is no reason good enough to break a marriage. Yep. Mm -hmm. And no matter what has been done, and yep. I've witnessed it, yeah. no matter what has been done, you just hang in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. See, and that's the other thing we have here. Jesus does not say you can't get divorced in this. No, no, no. He's, he says divorce yeah, exactly. is sad. Is perfectly acceptable, and it's just about making it. Well, it's, it's about taking it seriously, yes, taking is. it extremely seriously about what it's meant to be and how you're meant to live together, and um, yeah. And that's the. I think the other difference in the culture too is, you know, I'm assuming most of you got to choose your spouses. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. and again, women. <laughs> I know your your dad gave you to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> But uh, oh boy. But, you traded you know, her for a load of straw or something? Something like that. <laughs> but I mean, that's what it used to be is, you know, oh, yeah. you, the family would look for an appropriate Absolutely. husband who would be benefit. I'm joking. With you. I know. I'm just thinking you should have said I uh, traded me for a microwave, microwave card. card. Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> um, I didn't know. I got close. <laughs> microwave card, load of straw. <laughs> But it's yeah. the bed inside. <laughs> yeah. But it's but, but back you. then it was is more a family relationship and yeah. and so you were meant to the the bride and the groom, you know the parents would make the arrangements and and sometimes absolutely. those arrangements did yeah. work. Well, yeah. part oh, of the, they, well, part of the just, reason they work is culturally you have to make them work. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, so when you yes. run into those hard times, it's like, yeah, yeah let's get divorced. I think, uh, mom will kill me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
that's right. Yeah, and you that you, you know, and, and you have the whole community yes. encouraging exactly. what that's the story true, is yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And that's the other thing. I mean, they, they're, the culture in which they live is so, <coughs> so beyond what we, how we understand life works. And so that's the hard thing sometimes for us to understand things. Um, context matters. Yeah. You know? And, um, and that's why I get angry when folks just grab scripture and I'm like, yeah. you need to study it. You need to understand it. You know? Cause that's, it's been hard when we have people come in who want to join the church and the reason they want to join the church is they were kicked out of their last church because they got divorced. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sad. Or yeah. allowed, allowed communion because of it. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and we're not, yeah, and we're not, and we're not saying, yay, divorce. No. Absolutely not. We take marriage vows extremely seriously. But it's sometimes things happen, and, you know, especially when it's, you know, abusive or. Oh, yeah. I was reading like an that. article about Jamie Lee Curtis, and she has a son who has decided he's a girl. Mm hmm. Okay. And, you know, this just brings out the point. You love these children regardless. And our church is saying that. And yet there are churches in our area who are just so separated out because yeah. they can't see past that need for loving everyone because yeah. we just yeah. keep those things hidden oftentimes and, and make ourselves sick or mm -hmm. those people that feel they are a different uh, yeah. Well, again, that, as we mentioned, this is about Jesus pointing out right. care for the vulnerable, yeah. those who are yeah. easily thrown away. Well, that's why, I, you know, probably why I'm more sensitive about it is just this morning I was watching a video about a woman who had been, um, there, it's a video about um, how arranged marriages are still very much alive and well in the United States. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and this one woman was telling her story, you know, being married off at 13 and and just, you know, the, the horrific details of everything and how um, she's now kind of joining the fight in um, Idaho and some other places to try to raise the age at which um, girls are allowed to be married. And, um, and it infuriates me that people fight against that on religious reasons. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 no. that's the opposite of religious reasons. They're, you're messing with their culture. Don't exactly. mess with my culture. Exactly. Don't make me change something that mm -hmm. my father and my grandfather believed in. Because Absolutely. if you do, that means... Well, that's the reason they came to that land yeah, in the first place. Well, back. And then they're just saying, then that's then there's no reason for my belief, and you can't do that to me anymore. Yeah. You know, and so our culture, our preferences trump anything Jesus is saying, because it you can't get much more clear about Jesus saying, you speak up for and protect the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when you do the opposite, you know. He yeah. knew the woman at the well's life story, and mm -hmm. he still had compassion for her. Yeah, he still engaged with her, which was ridiculous. Well, you'd like to think your doors are open. You'd like to think your doors are open. Out at St. Olaf, we like to think of ourselves as being open-minded but when it comes right down to it there are prejudices that are alive and well and, and nurtured every day and they're hard to mm -hmm. our job is to recognize well, them in ourselves and work our, you know work to be a better well, that's, person that's yeah. part of our baptismal theology is every day you get to start over yes because mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. true because true a lot of these prejudices were you know, they were enculturated, yep. yep. mm -hmm. and it's hard to change those. Yes, yeah. it is. And that's why I quoted that Song of Soul Pacific in my sermon on Sunday. You have to be carefully taught. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a great song. That's a great song, anyway. But, yeah. For those of you who like musicals. Oh, I love oh. musicals. How Wait, can we you find not? out stuff. I, I love musicals. Some of us are heathen. Heathen. We have Lisa only got to one question here, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. So so let's get you got to get to sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got booster shots to get. Okay. <laughs> Jesus simply reminds the Pharisees of the teaching of Moses, allowing a man to dismiss his wife with a certificate. The key aspect of this response lies in what comes next. Moses allowed divorce due to the hardness of heart, so that wives and children might be protected. And that's in Deuteronomy. It was a way to offset cruel and inhumane treatment of husbands toward their wives when they were finished with them. 
No longer were husbands to put out a wife like garbage, ostracized from the community and society. Minimally, a certificate would allow a woman options for her future. How have laws about divorce changed since biblical days? <laughs> they get half. <laughs> well, it depends on the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It does. That's and, who, true. and who has the lawyer? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, and who has the better lawyers? Yeah. But, they're all but different. Yes. Every, you know, mm -hmm. we've had several in our family, and they're all different. Yeah. They are. But they are treated more as equals than one having more, most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. Treated as, at least in the eyes of the law, as being more equal. And it's almost to the point where there's a feeling like, well, you know, it doesn't work out, we're just... I had a couple, um, in couples counseling, and the wife saying, well, you know, you know, we get married, you know, if it doesn't work out, then we each get half of everything and it'll be fine. I'm going, and that's the attitude in which you're entering mm -hmm. into it? Mm -hmm. Sad. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So it's... But yeah, so we have a lot more protections now. Um, and it's not, and it's something you have to do with somebody else now. Yes. For with the husband, you just write the certificate himself. It goes through a court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so the woman, or whichever spouse is yeah. the weakest, yeah. still has at least some advocates. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not a momentary decision. I'm really angry yeah. with you, so get out of here. Yeah. No, you have to go through a whole bunch of steps. Yeah. You know, And you have lots of time to rethink. But And mm -hmm. how is Moses attempting to bring decency into the divorce? Can't just throw them out. Yeah. Because if a woman out on the street, you know, it'd be harder for somebody else to marry her if they didn't know she was officially divorced. Because mm -hmm. adultery was worse than... Well, adultery gets you to death. Yeah. 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 And so at least with the certificate, the woman could say, see, I am available for remarriage. And I'm not a prostitute. That too. Because mm -hmm. a woman on the street without any... Means of support. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. okay. Well, nevertheless, God does not intend divorce to be the outcome of marriage. God desires the union of a marriage to be a sacred joining together for two persons. The two shall become one flesh. The standard established by God is a high one, based on God's love unifying two into one. When the two are split at death or divorce, there is a painful severing of one flesh. The separation of this union is not to be felt like a splinter under the skin, but a splitting of one flesh. How does Jesus raise the standard of marriage? It's described as a sacred joining. It's to become one. It's no longer a property arrangement. Yep. You know, Fred's been gone four years, but it still feels like he's right beside me. Yeah. And I still feel joined to him. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's been a blessing to think that. But there's not everyone who does. If there's, you know, that they um, lose their mate and, and uh, they seek a, another to make their life complete. And, and that's okay too and it's an individual kind of thing um, but I'm sure those that decide that they want to have another relationship that that's also a a blessing for them too that they can find a companion to spend their time with each of us is different mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. but you know we're in, in, in Jesus' vision of this we're going into something that well, it transforms our lives. It's not about convenience. No. It's not about momentary feelings. Um, that we take it seriously. Yeah. We're you know, doing it. It's not something disposable. Yeah. You know? And I, I think I think we need to be reminded of that more and more. When he says don't separate, or it shouldn't separate and we should help to work, work to help them yeah. be complete. Yeah. And just... Well, and, and just recognizing that, yes, sometimes it is just too broken, you know? Right. And, that, and then you're still there being supportive and loving and saying, even, in, you know, brokenness doesn't mean we reject you. Our, the love continues. Right. Well, 
you know, one of the ways I've come to understand divorce is it is similar to the death of the pain of a death because it is, mm -hmm. you've lost it's that spouse. The it's I mean, the death of a, a life together. Yeah. Yeah. Most couples, when you get married, you have these dreams, these yeah. hopes of what the future is going to look like and yeah. they're gone. There's no future left. And so it, divorce is not a simple, oh, oh, let's go yeah. out. It's, you know, it's for yeah. most people, it's a mm -hmm. complex set of feelings and, and pains. Well, and that, you know, the one that you loved so very much that you wanted to share everything with, that the emotions have changed to such the opposite. I mean, that's a devastating thing. I know in text that you were talking and one of the pastors mentioned, he had a, somebody he was talking to said, if I put as much energy into my first marriage as I put into my second marriage, yeah. the first marriage probably would have lasted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's the thing, you know, marriage is work. It is. It's, just, it's a job. It's a job. But when you don't have the same dreams again, or you yeah. just, you know, yeah. it, it, like you said, it's apart. gotten broken. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And it's a serious, serious thing. I mean, you know, kids come at it from a kid's point of view. And then you get kids involved yeah. in it, and their life is not ever the same when yeah. you get kids mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. And that's, yeah. You know, one of the things I remember learning early on is, you know, couples that come to you really fast when it's time for them to want to get married. But when they have problems, the pastors never even thought of, mm -hmm. you know, or the idea of seeing a counselor is, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes you just need that, you know, for a non-abusive relationship. Right. You right. just need that extra, sometimes just that little extra outside voice coming in and saying, well, to give you perspective. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to get caught up in whatever it is we're caught up in. And for somebody on the outside to go, okay, wait a minute. What I'm seeing here is, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. I can't remember. Is it your turn or mine? Your turn. My turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. we get so, we're talking so much, I'm losing track. Inside the house and away from the crowd, the disciples ask Jesus more questions. At this point, Jesus equalizes the possibilities. Husbands or wives who divorce are held to the same standard. Women in the first century would have not been able to divorce their husbands. In a strange way, Jesus turns things upside down by his radical teaching. Jesus emphasizes the standard of love in all circumstances and in all relationships. God intends for marriage to be a life-giving union. Yet reality reveals some marriages do not realize God's intended union. The two who have been joined remain separated, living disjointed lives. Jesus does not take time to deal with exceptions, but is interrupted by the disciples who are resisting the children from coming to him. This is where Jesus becomes indignant. Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Again and again, Jesus turns things upside down. I like to say right side up. <laughs> what are options when marriage no longer reflects God's union of two persons? No, you mentioned therapy, mm -hmm. going to a counselor. I remember reading a story growing up where the couple just bought two houses next to each other. Mm -hmm. And at night, one would go to one house and the other would go to the other house. And, and they had a very successful marriage after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cost a little bit more, but... Mm -hmm. You know, and, I mean, divorce is, is always an option. It is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, we're no in no way going to say that it's evil or wrong. Yeah. Absolutely not. It it's acknowledges just it's just really painful. It acknowledges that something is broken and it's time for some healing. And yeah, yeah, especially if there's abuse. I mean, that's been the yeah. scary thing. You know, it's on the news way too much. The um, who was the girl who died? Oh, the, oh, the, the uh, one they found in Montana. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, he was yeah. abusive. There's yeah. a video of that. But yeah. we just, don't know. Was but it an there's accident? so much out there. You know, everybody yeah. likes to put on the clean, 
beautiful pictures online yeah. and every around yeah. other people, but yeah. it it's can be still, frightening what's actually going on. Yeah. yeah, a friend of mine was going through a terrible time, no, no idea, no idea, because never said anything. Yeah. And then uh, after uh, she had escaped and he had killed himself, then she was at a counselor who said you need to write all this down and send it to somebody that would understand. You need to get this out. And so here I got this letter, and I thought, oh, oh my gosh. It was horrific. And, uh, and again, no idea, because you didn't talk about things like that in my generation. Well, even in ours. Yeah. Well, we see it. I mean, the, the couple had all these videos of the perfect life, and... So happy. When the camera turned off. It... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's always complicated. It's mm -hmm. never a simple story. Mm -hmm. Human mm -hmm. beings are messy. The answers aren't simple either. No, they're not. And that's not that there's, you know, there's a villain and then there's a victim. There's, there's wrong. There's, just, there's a lot of wrong. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be love and support. I mean, well, yeah, there's still is a victim. Um, I guess I'm just trying to say that it's it's complicated, and it, but that yeah, at the same time it's never okay. It's never, mm -hmm. ever, mm -hmm. okay to harm another person. Like but, that. I, but I think it also tells us that we should do what we can to keep them from separating. If there's something that we can do yeah. to help their relationship become stronger, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, know not was... judging so much. Yeah. You know, be be a listener to your friend. You know, uh, yeah. be available. No, let your friends know you're available. And, and it's also for those who are divorced, is to be there for them. Oh, absolutely, because then afterwards they're picking up the pieces. Yeah, yeah. And that's a tough road. Very tough. We've seen it. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, yeah it's, and that's why I'm hoping. You know, at least I think we are so far, but the church is very welcoming and open to people who have gone through divorce. They're yeah. not putting a lot of, uh, our, you know, our churches aren't putting yeah. guilt yeah. and things on that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that people we know that we, we do take marriage very seriously, but that we don't condemn those right. who have had right. to come to the time of divorce. I mean, no, no. Absolutely not. Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yes. I suppose that's one of the other downsides is divorce is a very public yes. thing, whereas most of us can, unless we're caught by the police or do something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, and I think I, I, a number of years ago now, I'm not sure how long ago now, um, uh, there was uh, pastors working within the ELC and other denominations too, saying, you know, we have such rituals, such meaningful rituals when people get married, but as a community of faith, isn't there a way for us to honor and a ritual for a breaking of a relationship, recognizing the brokenness, but yet the love and the support and the care and came up with um, some rites and things that you could do as uh, church community or just as the couple with the pastor to acknowledge the pain acknowledge the brokenness um, to respect it and to grieve together yeah. you know and I always thought that is amazing healing yeah it's meant for healing there's mm -hmm. there's not a bad guy and a good guy here it's this has not worked yeah okay well we jump to the second part of the word among us the church wedding was like a fairy tale with friends and family from faraway places. The pastor spoke appropriate words during the sermon. I always hope I do that. <laughs> <laughs> the blessing was uttered with confidence. Everything concerning the wedding went on schedule with gorgeous pictures to serve as a reminder. Yet after the wedding gifts were put away and the thank you cards were written, troubles began to creep into the marriage. The newlyweds realized they had nothing in common, nor did they particularly like each other. Somehow, they had become so caught up in planning the perfect wedding, they ignored their own deteriorating relationship. Neither one had the skills nor motivation to try to build a foundation for marriage, nor did they turn to God for guidance. Instead, they chose to lead independent lives, becoming strangers to each other. They chose not to divorce, but knew they were not living as a unified body blessed by God as one flesh. 
they developed unhealthy patterns of deeply wounding each other through their daily words and actions. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's sad. Yeah. So what does God intend for marriage? Not that. Mm, yeah. yeah. But you can see it happening. You mm -hmm. can see how it happens. The ritual becomes more than what. Yeah. More than what it's uh, yeah. intended to be. Well, it's not like Kevin. Well, you know. Well, I know that. Yes. It's one of the more interesting things I've seen lately. I don't want to condemn anybody. Yeah. If you are one of these couples, but I've noticed they're they're booking the. Uh, Reception hall before talking to a pastor. Yeah, the pastor's in Africa. Oh, but don't you know how hard it is to get a good one? I, I know. And a quote. And no, sure, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, we've heard that. We've had those yeah, conversations. Yeah. Yeah, well, you so, have two girls. I mean, guess what you can look forward to. <laughs> well, we have, we, we're pastors. We, we use the fellowship hall. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Bring back the old simple days that's when the wedding we was did. just a reception in the hall. Well, that's now, we to did. be honest, they've had these outdoor ones because of uh, oh, yeah. uh, the, yes. the outside yeah. being uh, safer. Ours well, was a picnic. Yeah. yeah, ours was a picnic. We were in my parents' backyard. Oh, excellent. And actually, my mother's flower garden. And then we had a picnic. Yeah. yeah. The most expensive thing was the tent my mother insisted on buying to put over the food. Well, Which yes. I don't blame her because, you know, For we're in sure. the woods. <laughs> but, For sure. But it is, you know, God intends you to put energy into it. To, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, not focus on the glitzy things, but on the nitty-gritty daily things. Our, our culture encourages it. it they encourage the, mm -hmm. the celebratory part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with no. celebrating it. We should no. be. No. But... In the that, we're, lo we we're losing the point of why we're even doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so how can good people marry but not experience God's blessing of unity? Use this case study as an illustration. Yeah. Well, that's, because they do. <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. Well, and you know, there are seasons in life too. I mean, there's going to be times when you're closer than mm -hmm. other times. Yep. And yep. that... That there's a recognition of that and a working on of that, you know. Well, don't you think too that they fairy tale? They probably were high school sweethearts, just thrown together, always together, and then they find as they grow older, they're just growing apart. Yeah, yeah. Or, and it's not. Yeah. Or the other thing we've seen is um, couples that'll get that will meet, date for a few weeks, and then decide, you know, this sounds pretty good. And most, okay, okay. From this is um, anecdotal. I think I'm yeah, this yeah, right. yeah, anecdotal. Is all uh, you know. Most of the, our friends, you know, is at about the one year mark is when they realize the other person's faults. Oh, you know, I don't know if you guys can remember that far back, but <laughs> you know, it, up until you hit the one year mark, it's pretty easy to be infatuated and not see the what's wrong with the other person and. Yeah, we had we we were together for almost four years before we got married, so we knew each other's yeah pretty well at that point. And we had friends of ours who, um, after we got engaged, they started dating. started dating and they got married a week before we got married. Yeah. And there was a wonderful marriage, a wonderful life together, but it was in that first two years of marriage that they really actually got to know each other. And wow, was it yeah. Spectacular, and the woman, in, in, who's about the most kindest, most gentle person you could ever know, discovered that she actually, yes, can get extremely angry and and break things. <laughs> yeah. I suppose we shouldn't name them out loud, but no, in case you're wondering, there's you one thing worse than stepping on a Lego at night. <gasps> yeah, oh, that hurts so bad. Yeah. Let's see it worst. When your husband leaves his past plastic modeling kit in the bed and you roll over on it. Oh. <laughs> you need to say if you if you are a modeler, do not do it in bed. Yeah, if you do it. Yeah. But it was a small apartment. <laughs> but it but it is all the stories. You know, but people do get do fall uh, apart and get separated. I know that's one of the things that's really hard to see at seminary is the divorce rate is rather high. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> a lot of couples they go to or either they realize that their marriage isn't working out, and then after marriage, 
you know, they decided to follow their dreams of being a pastor or during seminary, the spouse looks at it and says, you want me to do what? And also the financial strain. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. You know, if, you, if you're if you used to living a comfortable lifestyle, that's four years of seminary that you're living as yeah. a student again. Yeah. For sure, things have changed. But, and so, so yeah. it, you know, things do change and dreams change. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's so true. I mean, the number of divorces that happened for classmates um, was, was, yeah, it was definitely high. Mm -hmm. That surprised me. It was sad. So what, under what circumstances might couples consider divorcing? Well, I think you mentioned the yeah. abuse. Oh, abuse. yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, even this description is abusive. When you have to say, get in the patterns of saying wounding things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be physical. No, no, no mm -hmm. it doesn't. That's a lot of pain when you have somebody saying negative to you every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I, this this idea that, that they don't even like each other. Yeah, I mean it, yeah. that just kind of. Yeah, if you can't like. How each can other, you then... how can you plan a marriage and then all of a sudden decide you don't like each well, like other? Like I said, you know? you know, we learned after that first year, all you your infatuation wears away, and you get yeah. to see the person. Yeah, without the yeah. blinders on. Yeah. Well, the, and and then yeah. for people to recognize that, yeah, okay, all the romance and the hearts and flowers are gone. And we're not, you know, anymore. Yeah. Um, but we're friends. We're we have each other's backs. We, right. I mean, mm -hmm. that is not marriage is not just about That's right. that rush of. That's excitement. about loyalty. It's, it's about loyalty. loyalty and trust yes. and yeah. yeah. You gave common your, goals. You gave yeah. your word. Yeah. Well, your, your your common goals. <laughs> your, your, uh, it's a strange I've thing never looked, I've never looked at. It as anything else but I gave my word. Mm -hmm. My word is should mean something. Yeah. And you have to put more behind it than just your word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think too, not, people don't necessarily understand that when we say, you know, which for poor, you know, some yeah. a better or worse, you know, good health and bad health. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we have no idea what that's going to mean. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, about a year after we got That's married, right. you had, uh, we had a very scary situation, medical situation for him. And yeah, yeah we were a year into it. And it's yeah. all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, this is what we promised. This is scary. Yes, yeah. it is. What the heck are we going to do now? You know, yeah. scared. To... Well, it was more scary yeah, for you. Know. you. Yeah. I was excited they found out what was wrong. <laughs> but there's a strain there. It's terrifying. It's yeah. terrifying. Mm -hmm. oh. No. So. Okay. Where are we? Um, unfortunately, that phrase. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, that hardness of heart in Mark ten five does not just apply to those who lived in the first century, nor is it limited to the marriage relationship. Hardness of heart is a human condition that can open the door to the worst treatment of others. When hardness of heart creeps into a marriage, the relationship withers and dies. People may continue in the marriage, but there is neither life nor God. Those marriages are in need of resurrection, a gift from God to restore the unity and love. It might be argued that every marriage is less than God intends because two sinful human beings are involved. <laughs> marriage and all relationships are in need of God's presence. So what counsel might you give to those who find themselves in a marriage that is less than God's intention? Well, what have you said? <laughs> yeah. If it's abusive, well, that's a whole, that's, that's a whole separate. other thing. But if it's not abusive, it's you know, talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know there's, well, even that's the nice thing about online now is there's so many things you can do online. True. Yeah. You know, one of the things they talk about, we do a prepare and rich survey. Mm -hmm. Just taking the prepare and rich survey without any counseling, was it was it will increase or decrease your likelihood of divorce by fifteen percent? Yeah, it was very significant. Because when you take the survey, you have to you think about different things. It hits all different aspects of your life, and then yeah. couples come together afterwards and say, "So, what do you think of that question?" Yeah, it forces you actually, to think about things that you may not necessarily have, yeah. and discover differences that maybe you didn't realize you had. But they're also talking about all relationships. Yeah. Yes. All friendships. Yes. Mm -hmm. It needs to be worked on to be yeah. a friend. Yeah. 
you know, Absolutely. to do, to see your friend's need, to see yeah. your spouse's needs, you know, to not be self-centered, to, uh, you know, have, yeah. have their back, yeah. have your friends back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for them to know you do. Yeah. And in a Certainly. relationship, in a marriage, I think your best friend is your spouse. I was going to say normally it does it for some it's not always okay all right you know, I'm, I'm looking at you I'm thinking of me no it is <laughs> well, for, it's us. True for us but, but I know yeah. there are some people where there is a best friend who is that just yeah you know they had that lifelong bond it's yeah. you know it doesn't yeah. you know it's doesn't take it anything doesn't away, take from away from the way from from marriage. marriage no, no. but no. it's no. it's know, a different kind of relationship. different kind of relationship right. and so yeah. it I don't want to say you can't. You know, your spouse has to be your best friend. I guess that's the way. No, no, no. I didn't quite mean often, that. Quite often, it should I didn't be. mean that. But yeah, they're There's the best. one that probably knows you the best of all, but yeah. not necessarily because, like you said, you have yeah. friends that have yeah. known you since childhood. That yeah, yeah. And I pay them to keep my secrets. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and you, yeah, and, and they. <laughs> oh, uh, so. Oh. Well, and you know what role does. God play in renewal of marriage. Well, he's a constant. He's he's there to support you and talk to and mm -hmm. just. I think God's yeah. values try to reorient us, you know, because mm -hmm. we do get bogged down mm -hmm. and we do lose sight. Mm -hmm. When I talk with couples, I like to talk about how often it's almost like the the blinders that they had on horses. And you just see things in a particular way through particular lenses. And you need some help, you know, recognizing those and um, pulling them off. Yeah. Yeah. I probably shouldn't say this, but, you know, there's also just the standard renewal of vows. Yeah. Because you know? one of us has been procrastinating. Somebody Ooh, agrees to do that, something. and uh, <laughs> well, don't you think you do that to, amongst yourselves? You don't really you know, need to have a but, public but witness. For some, but for yeah. some, the formal yeah. can be be another way to remind yourself. Yeah, it, it's an option. Right. Yeah, but yeah, you know, it, there's no reason why we, we can't just intending our relationship that we do have that sense of renewal. But but there again, there are husbands. Of, I told you once. And oh, it hasn't yes. changed. Yes. Carved in Fred stone. loved that line. Yeah, that was Marvin's line. Yeah. I know. And Fred loved it. And the question was, do you love me? And the answer was, I told you once, if it changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> and that has been a creed passed down through the years. Yeah. But you could, you, but you know, There's by actions, you know. by what, yeah. you it's, know. it's all right there. Yeah. It's yeah. all right there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just, it's like the other Trying to be funny. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, it's like I, I've tried to. I've talked to the girls about those kinds of things. Um, I, I try to remember what the situation was, but um, Chuck had gone out and taken care of something, and and it was really early and it was cold and it was unpleasant. But by golly, he went and did that. Yeah. And I turned to the girls and I said, "You know that that's an expression of love, right? That's Dad saying I love you to us. Yep. Yeah. You know, exactly. to recognize those things." Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, this is a hard question. Hmm. What are the possibilities of new life and marriage if both do not desire it? Oh my gosh. Hmm. I don't know if there is. I, I mean, I would hope there would be, but... It's really hard if both don't want to be in it. Yeah. There would have to be some easing of the hardness of heart. I mean... I think, too, that, you know, we're talking about friendship. If you are privy to this kind of information. There's a real strain to know what to say yeah. or not to say. Yeah. It's so easy to jump in with, you know, free advice. advice and you think it's the right thing to do. But it is a serious thing. And sometimes it's very painful to be to know what you know. And, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and so that's also where you certainly need yeah. <laughs> some yeah. help. Yeah. To, to do the right thing. Listen. To listen. To and say it. Yeah. To listen. Say, and sometimes, to, right to listen. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. the listening is. Right. Because it, it, when you um, speak something. Yeah. 
you hear it differently than yes. as you're thinking it. Yeah. yeah. But and so just having somebody to talk to can change. But do yeah. both of those parties really not desire it? You know, maybe they really do in some fashion. So just by listening, mm -hmm. maybe you can discern yes. if this yeah. is a relationship that is just new and and there is something there. You know, yeah. and, it's, and, and if one doesn't desire it, well, okay, let's let's talk about that. What what is it that's yeah. making you not desire yeah. it, and can we address those things? Yeah. You know, but in the heat of the moment, oh. those kind of logical thoughts do not come oh, to the fore. Oh, that's for sure. I think that's the other downside to marriage mm. is you have so much emotional investment exactly. into it. When the heat of the moment comes up, yeah. it just. Yeah, when I think that the thing, one of the biggest challenges for us has been we can both say the same thing, but we're meaning something entirely oh. different with totally different connotations. And that has created a lot of uncertainty and upset and anger that really wasn't necessary right. just because we are coming we, at it. They're coming at it from different directions. And I think until we figured that out, <laughs> we weren't, you know, it's kind of hard to make much. You can say traction. the same thing using different words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and, and vice versa. Yeah. Too, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> well, the disciples who restrict children from coming to Jesus have missed the point. Their concern is with their own personal status. They cannot see Jesus reaching out to all, particularly those with no status. Again and again, Jesus points to God's kingdom. This is true in all relationships, including marriage. As disciples, we are called to align our lives and our relationships with Jesus and his vision of God's kingdom. Ultimately, Jesus is concerned with God's reign and the manifestation of that reign in our lives and our treatment of others. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to take our baptismals serious. Yeah. What a concept. Maybe I'll have to get everybody wet on Sunday. I don't know. It's just a super, super soaker. Super oh, soaker. I like her. you have her. I so. freeze. I freeze so You, you have her, so. I bet Sadie would do it for me. <laughs> Oh, we have her. Oh, we're safe. <laughs> we're no, safe. we have saved her too. Oh, no, you should She's got her look. <clears throat> well, whenever he comes up with these ideas, she's a willing, willing oh, partner in crime. Oh, boy. We'll buy into that. Yeah. So. Mm. Oh. <coughs> well, let's uh, close with prayer. Gracious God, grant your grace to fill our relationships as we seek your reign in our lives. Amen. Amen. And this week, find a way to encourage someone's marriage. Thank you, guys. And so, yes, thank you very much. So, for announcements, if you are still watching this, um, COVID <laughs> is going. Yeah, if you're still watching, COVID <laughs> is still going up in our area in Cottonwood, Murray, and Redwood and Lyon counties. And so, it really went up in Redwood County. So, I encourage you, if you haven't been vaccinated, to talk to your doctors about it. If you um, are in groups with large people, I encourage you to wear a mask when you're out shopping or any place where you aren't sure of where everybody's been, but just to be safe. Yeah. Because this is the highest yeah. amount we've seen in our area since this began. And you know, we, we've all really enjoyed being able to ease up on those things and we renew some of our, our things we wanted to do and it's hard to let that go, but your your life and the lives of others you get more pretty free like in july right? yeah they kind oh of yeah everything got yeah, the numbers crashed much, yeah. and there's no or went way down it's like everything yeah. was yeah. going to be okay we thought we were done and then the delta variant came and around and then all of us yeah then this has yeah, gradually so. been going up yep so please we'll getting wise. our boosters today yep <gasps> boosters are nice mm -hmm. yep. oh you got your booster yeah. yeah good for you um i got it in in Westbrook? In Westbrook. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'd asked about when, you know, because I had no idea. Because yeah. you had Sadie there, too. You know, and... Um, I kind of figured they'd notify us that. I it did. Was, it was more yeah. out of curiosity that I was asking okay. about it. And um, and they said, oh, yeah, we, we've got it, and you qualify, so why don't I give it to you right now? And I'm like, oh, okay. excellent. Oh, okay, oh, yeah, okay. bring it on. I also got my flu shot at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go in Friday and get flu, so, so I'll get that, too. Okay. Well, God be with everybody there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>